Uh, hey everyone, once again, a little quick update. Um, this is a, uh, a project I've been working on for a little while. I uh, finally had some time to get onto it today. Um, as you can see here, this is uh, one of those Technologic Solutions SPC. It's a TS7500. Um, I'm just using the, the board, um, the base board at the moment. I'm actually designing my own board. Um, a base board for it, but what's special at the moment is I've um, custom written a motion controller um, module in Verilog for the onboard FPGA. Um, it's outputting step and direction um, signals on the two available outputs here, which the FPGA's got heaps, but this board's only got three, but I'm using two. Uh, going to a gecko, which is in turn on this uh, stepper with a pointer on it. If we come over to the PC here, which you probably can't really see because the thing can't zoom in or can't focus on it. Um, basically, uh, I've loaded the FPGA. I have um, there's a bunch of registers. Um, the way this works is it uses um, duration and acceleration um, to do the position. So you have to pre-calculate if you want to move, say, 4,000 counts. Um, you can work it out from um, the length of time, sorry, you work out the length of time from the acceleration and the um, maximum velocity you want to have um, to move that far and then work out the time and then from that you can then yeah, pretty much calculate any way you want. Um, so basically what I've got here is I've calculated it so that the pointer will turn 10 turns and it'll ramp up to full speed um, and then yeah go for a steady state for a while and slow down for 10 turns. So if I hit this button now, I'll go over here, you'll see it ramps up, slows down and stops. And if I change direction, that's that. Now hopefully you can hear it in the background. If you look over here, as I run it, you can see the CPU is available because it's done in the FPGA. All I'm doing, I'm using the um, vendor provided little um, utility to poke and peek values into um, the FPGA bus. So there's about, uh, I've got several registers, um, read and write registers and a couple of read only registers. Um, basically I've got an um, acceleration uh, writable register and a duration writable register and a status register which I actually use for triggering the FPGA to say go and that's what I'm doing here. Uh, and it actually sets the direction as well so yeah, you can go forwards or reverse. Um, using the FPGA means that um, the pulses don't have any jitter from the kernel um, because real time is a pain. Uh, previously I did it with uh, quadrature encoders and had to keep looking ahead, looking ahead, looking ahead and trying to ramp and do all that stuff while I'm in motion and, and the kernel interrupting it and everything. Whereas doing it in the FPGA means that once I tell it to um, go, it goes and does it to the clock, so it's all nice and smooth. Um, so, yeah, so anyway, so I just thought I'd give you a quickie, quickie update on what I've been working on. Um, I might release Core, I don't know. Um, it's sort of for a project for uh, uh, my employer, um, but uh, there's nothing really that critical in it. It's, uh, it's just a bit of math and some fairly simple Verilog. Uh, the hardest thing was probably um, getting the module to talk, because it's a wishbone compatible module, um, which wasn't that complicated, but just, uh, yeah, doing the integer maths. Anyway, um, that's a pretty boring shot. Um, that's all I have to really say. Um, basically, this could actually become the basis of a 3 or 4 axis CNC machine um, controller, where you just give it vectors of, you know, acceleration and... Um, duration for motion and if you sync them up to um, sync up several axes at once so that you know when you top out one it limits the others so that you can get proper profiles and stuff and that way the CPU doesn't have to do anything while you're doing passing it um, velocities and sorry um, accelerations and times and um, yeah it would look after it itself and I think that's pretty much what smooth stepper for um, Windows land does because EMC doesn't need it because it's real-time kernel but even still, even though a real-time kernel, you're still going to have mechanical jitter because a CPU can only do one thing at once, so which means you're always going to have one axis, 
one pulse or whatever pulse ahead of the next one even though it's pretty much instantaneous whereas an FPGA you tell it to go all of them go in parallel so they're all going to be lock step perfect anyway uh, that's five minutes I should finish it here see you guys